So I was watching my favourite podcast, uh, Arsenal Pass, with Hayden Dale and Brendan Patrick. I, mean, I really need to adjust my hair. And um, it got me... Th- there was a clip with Dante Del Fico, and um, it started getting me thinking about how the LSS uh, procedures, as far as, like, uh, warnings and everything, I think it goes a little bit too far. And um, I'll play the entire clip right now. Uh, where it explains how um, Dominic gets an IP5. And I'll done so as well. Oh yeah, nice uh, three intellect. I know all about that, and I can tell you it is impossible to. <laughs> I know all about that. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, you should yeah. just tell that story, Dante. That's actually hilarious. Sure. Yeah. So. It was um, in Orlando. I, I just finished the tenth round of Swiss, I believe, um, and at that point, I was uh, undefeated in the Swiss rounds. I had just beaten Matt Rogers, actually, and Matt Rogers is like a player that I really look up to. So, you know, the adrenaline is high. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling it a little bit. I got to go take a walk, so I grab my posse, uh, Brendan Patrick, Hayden Dale. Uh, they come outside with me, my boys, as they say. Uh, we're all just hanging out outside. They decide to go back into the uh, into the into the venue. I decide to go to the washroom because uh, you know after a match like that you get a little bit nervous. I get back into the venue. Turns out the next round has started. Everybody's kind of finding their seats and sitting down. Um, from the door entering the venue to table one of where the calling was happening, it's like a mile long walk. It is insane how far you have to go to get there. So I, I engage speed walking mode. I'm like, I turn on the thrusters, I'm getting down there. Um, unfortunately, I was not fast enough because I'm about 20 seconds away from my table when I hear the intercom uh, go out and the head judge basically says that the next round is starting. But I'm walking over, I'm, I am speed at this point, and everybody can see me walking. <laughs> um, the judge is standing at my table with my opponent and he can literally see me like speed walking over. And they saw me prior to the next round being, you know, called a starting or anything like that. Um, I sit down and the judge is like, yep, so you're late. And I was like, yes, I'm sorry. I was in the washroom. And he's like, that doesn't matter. You're getting an IP five. And I was like, what? are you kidding me? I literally sat at that table like 20 seconds late. Now, if you don't know, an IP5 means that you have th- minus one intellect for three turns. So that means that every single turn you're drawing for th- three cards only. Now, usually this isn't an issue with other card games, like as much of an issue compared to other card games. But when it comes to Flesh and Blood, each of those cards represents at least three, three health or three damage. And when it really comes to like really large events, this is a massive amount of health. Um, these aren't turns you can just like simply just block off and let your opponent take the extra advantage because it's a high level event and everyone's decks already like crafted and skilled to the best possible decks possible. And it really got me thinking. So let's say you have four cards out of those four cards, you have two cards that block for two. Let's say you're playing Runeblade. And one of them is an attack that uh, that swings for four and that blocks for three. You can't just simply block with these three cards every single turn until you get over your IP. Because by that point, you've already lost every single bit of momentum that you could have ever gotten off. And I really think this IP system is really... Uh, really unfair to the players um especially in this case with dante del fico 20 seconds late to his uh table but just in general with high level play i really expect a lot more leniency when it comes to issues like this um and i really think there needs to be a situation where uh like a suitable replacement for this because if this ever happens to anyone, I believe it's already just a, an automatic loss. You should just give them the loss and l- go without it. Now, of course, there are decks that can actually perform very, very well under these circumstances, like, let's say, Bravo or even Old Him. 
which means that it's not even a balanced system as well. Because if we've got multiple different heroes in the game and multiple different um, like play styles and all that, that means every single deck is going to be completely different and be able to handle situations a lot differently. While, let's say, Runeblade, most of their cards block for two and they need a lot of momentum to keep going. But ult him, ult him can just use his hero ability, stop an opponent's entire turn, and then just part like continue to play. And let's we can even go one level further, and they can try and rock up a little bit late, so that they have the extra time to kind of stall them out, because they already feel like they're not going to win the game anyways. This is a you know a, going into the the crazy ideas right now, but. I really think there needs to be a replacement for this because that's Penrith for you. Because I really think it's an unfair thing to put onto professional level play. Um, of course, you know, I've, I've, I've thought of heaps of different ways where you could change this, but I think honestly the best way is instead of IP, so minusing the the intellect is actually letting your opponent see your hand for these turns instead. So therefore you can play around it, but your opponent like your opponent can play around your hand. They can kind of see what you're doing. Um, but of course, you know, this is just a nuanced idea. Um, and I've I've personally had this happen to an opponent of mine when we both went to top eight, I versed a Bravo player who had, I think, one or two different cards compared to their list because they just took a list online and then just played that list and uh, didn't think about changing a lot of the cards in it. And you could already see that, like, I've already got the advantage over him. And I'm playing Reiner. I'm a slow grind deck. And if the slow grind deck is able to outdo a Bravo... With, I think it was in uh, IP2, and I was just for two turns. I was able to get at least four extra health off him, which means so much. This is like the reason why Skullcap is so invaluable in the game, because Skullcap is basically one entire block, where it's a, a two block and then a one block. Same as uh, why people still run Skeleta, why people still run Grasp the Arknight, and even to like running Iron Rock Gauntlets. I think this IP system is a flawed system and needs to change if we want to go into a more professional play. Now, I know you can easily say just rock up to your table on time or, uh, you know, don't cheat. But if we want to expect the highest level of play, I feel like this isn't a, an alright system to keep going forward. Um, these are just my thoughts. Uh Shout out to the boys at Arsenal Pass. I love their podcast. And, um, of course, Dominic as well. Yeah, Dante Delfico. He's a very well-skilled player. Uh, it's skilled. <laughs> but, yeah, um, I'd love to hear your thoughts on maybe how there could be a different system in place. Um, and maybe even I'll probably try and contact LSS about this. Even though it's probably going to be like... A, like you know, an email in the wind, but maybe if there is enough support behind this, they might consider changing maybe one or two policies about this. That's it for the video, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.